Why would I ever want to change if I'm always right? Hello everyone, my name is Tom. Welcome back to another roast video. Today, we're gonna roast Simon from book three of Infinity Train. He was also in book two, technically, but we're specific, spec spec I don't know how to talk. We're specifically talking about book three because in book three, this homie went off the rails. And I know everybody last time was like, you say homie too much. Well, you know what? Y'all gonna deal with it. It's time to address this man. It's not enough that he got his soul sucked straight out of his body. He needs to get roasted too. Why though? Because there's a question here. Why was Simon not redeemed? Why did he not get his redemption? We live in an age where media, quite honestly, probably should be teaching us to accept people more and learn to forgive. However, sometimes the context for a story just doesn't allow for that. In this case, Simon, he just, he wasn't gonna get there. He could have, but he, he didn't. So why? What makes this character undeserving of being redeemed? Well, I'd actually argue that he did deserve to be redeemed. I don't think he was undeserving of redemption at all. This may be a bit of a hot take in this day and age, but I think the vast majority of people are worthy of forgiveness and capable of redemption, barring extreme cases. Someone like Simon, was very much deserving of redemption. He was honestly just some angry white boy dealing with some trauma and a lot of internal turmoil. He had abandonment issues, I'm sure, from the fact that he was on the train at a very young age. He may or may have not had a loving relationship with one or both of his parents. And if he did, that was probably very traumatic to be separated from them at such a young age. And then he found Samantha, who then abandoned him as well. And then he found Grace and immediately latched onto her and saw her as this cool, awesome person who he could count on to guide him through this hellscape that was the train. So as a result, this relationship was a little bit unbalanced. In their relationship and in the apex, Grace commanded respect and took initiative, which of course played a role in her relationship with Simon. They might be friends and be playful and maybe even a bit romantic, but Grace always held a bit more authority. And I think part of Simon was okay with this. Not entirely, but we'll get to that. Simon was attracted to someone who was going to give him the guidance and direction and warmth that he kept losing throughout his childhood, especially in a case that was life or death, which was basically just his entire situation here. But Grace wasn't entirely the person that Simon and the rest of the Apex saw her as. Grace was putting on an act to deal with her own trauma. For example, the way she talked about other kids in her dance class and saying how she was alienated from them because she was just better than them. That's why they didn't like her, is because she was just so talented that they were jealous. And that sounds a lot like coping with the fact that she just didn't feel like she belonged. She wanted to be accepted socially. She wanted to be accepted by her parents. She had all this baggage that she needed to deal with. And then once she was on the train, she could create this image of herself. She could wear this mask that would allow her to feel important and feel like people accepted her. Not only that, but she could feel like a leader to these people. But this acceptance was coming through this self-image that her justifications for all of this alienation was creating. And it was an acceptance that came really from taking advantage of young, impressionable people who didn't know any better. And Grace and Simon's appearance in season two was a great example of how this mask that Grace wears, the metaphorical identity of being someone that is better than everyone and knows best even when that might be objectively false. That can easily be seen through by someone who is not an impressionable young child or someone like Simon who has been conditioned since he was an impressionable young child to follow that leadership. So in conclusion, Grace wasn't that great of a person either. While Simon gave himself to Grace in the most honest and vulnerable ways that he could at his level of maturity, which to be honest, wasn't especially high. Grace was closed off and misguiding Simon, which was not a good thing. But you also have to remember that this started when Grace was very young, and that doesn't excuse what she did, but does mean that she is capable of changing as she matures and grows as a person. Because let's be real for a minute, kids tend to be really toxic as they're learning how to be functioning people. And those are usually things that they have to learn and grow out of as they get older. Again, that doesn't excuse what Grace did, but it does mean that she is capable 
capable of changing that behavior and being a better person. So as Hazel inspired Grace to let down her mask a bit and be more vulnerable, that is what we started to see. We started to see Grace become a better person. She wasn't being the person that she was with Simon or the Apex, and that was leading her to question herself and what she had been doing, and whether what she had been doing was actually right. And this change in Grace awakened an insecurity in Simon, because her growth was creating instability in their relationship. Because Grace was Simon's anchor. He had all these people he relied on throughout his life, and they always abandoned him, and they always left him to look out for himself when he wasn't prepared to, he didn't have the tools to survive on his own, and when that happened, the last time, Grace was there to help him pick up the pieces and figure out what to do. She gave him a sense of security, but now she was changing, and that sense of security was going away. Because she was changing and growing and realizing that the things that she was teaching Simon, the rules that they set up for themselves to survive this environment, were actually not true. And those were things that Simon internalized in order to find a sense of structure. This ideology of, I don't know what's going on, but I know that if I raise my number, that's a good thing. It means I have power. It means I have control in this chaotic and dangerous situation. And now I'm being told that raising my number is actually a bad thing. That this goal that I've been chasing for years now is actually incorrect and leading me in the wrong direction. How am I supposed to accept that? So if you're in a situation where you can't accept that you've been putting all of your eggs in the wrong basket, you might get angry. And who are you going to get angry at? The person who told you that that was the answer. The person that you trusted, who now seems to be moving on without you. Telling you to stop acting the way that you've been acting for years under their instruction. And now, you can't figure out what their expectations are. And you know that if they decide to leave you, then you're going to relive that trauma from before all over again, that abandonment, and you're not entirely sure if you even have the tools to survive on your own anymore. And that scares you, because you're a human being, and of course that's going to scare you. So what are you gonna do? Try to communicate? Try and open up about these feelings, these insecurities? Or are you going to try and sabotage everything, and turn on this person before they can turn on you? So here's the thing. Simon may have been attracted to the idea of having someone look after him and guide him, but he was also very uneasy with the idea of depending on someone. Even early on, you can see Simon try to take some initiative, but ultimately, anytime he tries to take the reins, Grace just has more experience, she has more insight, she is better equipped to handle these situations. She's the one who knows when to be serious, when to loosen up, and I think that part of Simon, despite appreciating that about Grace, also resents it. He feels he is in this place of needing that from someone, and as long as he needs that, he's going to be vulnerable to being hurt the way that he was before. And that's why he, half jokingly, tries to compete with Grace and tries to kind of jostle for her position and try and one-up her and try to raise his number so he can overtake her. Because if he can catch up to or even overtake Grace, then that will give him a greater sense of control and that will potentially ease some of his insecurities. So he can feel like he doesn't have to be dependent on Grace or Samantha or anybody. But that resentment, that insecurity, those feelings in Simon, he's not addressing them. He might be comfortable with Grace, but he is also too afraid to open up and admit the fact that he feels these things. He doesn't want to seem weak by saying, hey, I don't quite feel like we're equals, I feel like I'm struggling to be second to you, and I'm relying on you, and that's not a dynamic that I feel comfortable with. And that, of course, you can infer that he has not even tried to process these emotions. I don't even think for most of the story that he's aware that he has this resentment towards Grace. So similar to how Hazel was the trigger for Grace realizing that she needs to be a better person, and that this person she's been being is not reflective of who she really is deep down, that development in Grace is the trigger for Simon realizing just how dependent he is on her, and just how easily that can blow up in his face. And I think to some extent he even even blames Grace for putting him in that position, and I don't think that's completely misdirected. Simon's feelings are kind of valid there, but here's where things shift. Grace and Simon both start to realize these things about themselves. Grace realizes that she needs to stop lying to people, including herself, and she needs to not only make changes to her behavior, but also take accountability for how her past behavior has affected the people that she's come in contact with. That's Grace's character arc, and she even slips up a few times. She falls back into the old habits of treeing death and like garbage and the whole null mentality, but she reflects on those slip-ups and she acknowledges her feelings and her guilt about that so she can become more empathetic and honest with herself and actually start to realize the effect of her actions on others. Simon, on the other hand, he doesn't seem to be honest with himself at all. Simon is firmly under this impression that he's right. He is the victim. He is vindicated 
and any actions that he takes that might cause harm to others right now are totally justified because he has been hurt in the past. Because he has been hurt by Grace, he has been hurt by Samantha, he has been abandoned, and he is the victim here. So anything he does is totally fine. He's completely in the right, he cannot do anything wrong as long as he is under the justification that he has been wronged in the past. Because Simon believes that he is the hero of his own story, he has main character syndrome. Nobody told him that he is the Sasuke, not the Naruto of this anime. <laughs> and you can compare this to another character arc in another story. You can compare this to Katra from Shira, because she was in a similar mindset where she saw all the things that Adora did to her and she saw all this pain and suffering that she was going through, and she used that to justify the fact that she was doing very bad things. But the entire time, she felt like she was in the right. The difference is, is she was able to reflect on those feelings and realize that she was in the wrong. And despite the fact that she was not entitled to any of the patience or opportunities for growth that she had, she did get those opportunities through the kindness of others, and through those opportunities, she was able to actually improve on herself as a person, despite seeming like she was too far gone. And Simon could have done the exact same thing, but he didn't. And that's my whole point here. Now, I'm partly saying this because I know that someone's gonna point out- Oh, but you said Katra was- totally worthy of the redemption then, and you're comparing the two, and you're a hypocrite because you're saying that Katra was deserving of being redeemed, but you're saying that Simon was not redeemed. Listen, I'm saying that both deserve to be redeemed. I think Simon was deserving of redemption. The difference being, when Katra was given the opportunity to say, I'm gonna stop being a jerk right now, I'm gonna actually reflect on my actions and reflect on the fact that I've hurt people, she took those opportunities. She actually put in the work and reflected on herself on a fundamental level to stop being a bad person. Simon did not do that. Simon had those opportunities. Simon had several opportunities to do that, and he never took those opportunities. But he could have. He had the choice to, but he didn't. While Katra stepped out of her comfort zone to be better, Simon did not. And that's my entire point here. Because his mindset of, I was wronged, so therefore all the wronging I am doing to others is justified, that wasn't just a mindset. That was his entire worldview. He was able to justify everything he did through the information and the perspectives that he had. Killing Tuba, that was completely fine. That was completely justifiable because Tuba was a Null, and you kill Nulls. That was the perspective that he had. Grace deserved to be betrayed and overthrown because her number went down, his number went up, therefore, that's how it works. And not only that, but Grace also went back on the core beliefs of the Apex. And that was treasonous, and of course, to Simon, that was all the justification he needed to try and kill her. And those were the actions that led Simon to his downfall. So you know whose fault this is? It's all Simon's fault. He went out into the woods, he cut down the tree, created this casket which his body would lie in. Actually, it was more of an urn, because that homie was dusted. And you can go through all of his actions and see this. When Grace started to turn and change her moral system to be sensitive to Hazel, so that she could make her comfortable enough to join the Apex, Simon Simon responded by being a jerk, which, okay, you know, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. You can be a jerk. That doesn't mean that you're an awful person, especially when we know Simon is an insecure jerk. He's relying on Grace and seeing her show all this empathy and accommodation for someone else may have triggered something in him to just be a jerk, especially when she's entertaining this child's attachment to a null and we know his history with that. So like, it's it's not even that bad, guys. It's, it's, it's really not that bad. He just needs some time to warm up to Hazel and Tuba. It's not that bad. And then he, uh, then he just straight up murders Tuba. And then with a smile on his face, he walks in and just tells this little girl who is very attached to her, yeah, I just straight up murdered your guardian figure. And you know what? I think it was the right thing to do. I have no remorse about it whatsoever. Is murder really that bad? Maybe this was just a momentary lapse in judgment. Maybe it's not fully reflective of his character. Maybe he is raging a little bit at the fact that the conductor turned out to be a woman. Maybe just a little bit. It's just because he's scared, guys. He doesn't know how to accept all this information. But obviously, you know, Grace knows what she's doing. She's in a good place. And if he trusts her, like he always has, maybe he'll come around if she does, if she guides him that direction, which she seems to be doing like, maybe he'll be fine. As long as he doesn't, you know, like, trap her in a hellscape of her own subconscious, where she has to face physical manifestations of her guilt and her demons and her failures, as long as that doesn't happen, it's probably fine. It's probably good, you know? It's not like, you know, being tortured like that possibly forever is probably fate worse than death, you know? So, like, he, he wouldn't do that, except he did.
And then he overtook her spot in the Apex and went full anime villain and tried to kill her in front of a bunch of children, which that didn't work and it almost cost him his life and Grace still saved him despite all of that, despite the fact that he is trying to kill her. Yo, maybe, maybe now that Grace saved his life. Maybe this is the turning point. After all of these things, maybe now he's going to stop and realize, oh, maybe I've been a Jax act this entire time. But no, after all of this, he goes insane with bloodlust and tries to kill her again and his number just goes through the roof. And this leads to his soul getting sucked from his body by a demon sucker because he's gone completely insane. See, this is the thing. Simon wasn't such an evil person that he could not have been redeemed. He was not too lost. He was not too far gone. He just decided not to come back. He made that choice for himself. Part of me doesn't even want to roast him for that. At least he did it with his chest. He really just made that decision and decided to stick with it. Like, even beyond your trauma and your issues, you had multiple chances. You could have not killed the maternal figure of a child who trusted you. You could have even just trusted your friend or the lady who was selling you very good advice and turned out to be the false prophet that you've been worshipping for basically your entire life. Especially when all the evidence right in front of you is telling you that that's who she is. This dude just wants to be an anime villain. He just wanted to be toxic and self-destructive and honestly part of me can kind of respect that. Does that make him a good person? No. <laughs> Not at all. But if you're gonna be that person, just be that person. Like don't tiptoe around it. Just murder your friends and traumatize some children. Don't put one foot in and one foot out and be like, oh, well, I'm good sometimes. Like, just go all in. That's probably the real reason why people don't like Katra. For the majority of Shira, people were all saying, we need Katra door. We need Katra to be redeemed. It's that or bust. And then once it happened, people were very upset. There was a huge group of people who were very upset with that. And I think the reason why is because Catra went so far in that direction. She went so far in the direction of, I'm going to go all in and be unapologetic about it. And then at the last moment, she took the last opportunity to say, you know what, maybe this isn't the person I wanna be. So she had to circle back around and backtrack on all of that and take all of that back. All of these things that she did with such conviction and go back on it. And I think that's more what people take issue with. They had this perception of her because of how confidently awful she was. So now the fact that she's trying to be good and trying to change, it's jarring and kind of goes against what they want. Because it's so easy to process a good person who has never done anything that objectionable. And it's really easy to process a bad person who has done a lot of bad things. But it's not easy to process someone who has done a lot of really disgusting things, but has a genuine desire to be a better person and is making a very conscious effort to do that because that has nuance. And to be honest, individuals, that's one thing. Individuals can process that just fine. But plural, people, communities, that's when nuance starts to get lost because you have a bunch of people who want to conform to a general idea and they're all taking something different away from the situation. In some capacity, I think that Simon somehow learned just through the human experience that there was a point of no return that he had passed. And the more he acknowledged that and acknowledged the direction of his actions, I think the less likely he was to turn around and be a better person. Which this might sound like, oh, Simon is a victim of the culture that he was in indoctrinated by, he's actually the victim in all of this, but not really. Because even though he had that internal feeling of I'm too far gone, I cannot come back, there were a lot of external factors that were pushing him in the other direction. Grace never gave up on him. Grace threw out all of this, up until the point where he was getting his soul sucked out of him, was sitting there hoping that he would learn to be better. She was right there, even after all the things that he did to her. She never gave up hope on him. She knew because she had gone through it, she had changed. And she thought that he could do the same, but he didn't. And even Tuba, before he wheeled her, was actually starting to come around and be like, you know what, maybe this kid isn't that bad. Maybe this kid is actually capable of being a somewhat decent person, and then he murdered her. So he had these two situations, this internal feeling of I've gone too far, and this external feeling from all the people around him. I mean, not everyone, but a vast majority of people were like, yo, dude, you can still turn into a good person. You still have time to not be like this. Simon had the choice to indulge in either of those energies, and he chose the path of evil, and that's all there is to it. Now, I can already see some comments saying, now wait, I thought that this was supposed to be a roast. You didn't roast this guy. You just analyzed him and rationalized his behavior. But let me ask you this, which is a more devastating roast? Just giving some surface level insults like, ooh boy, you got that hair and that ponytail and whatever, like, is that more devastating? Or completely exposing someone for all their flaws and giving them all this empathy and all these possible justifications and still coming to a conclusion 
that they are trash. Is that not more devastating? I'll let you all decide, so let me know in the comments down below, or you can find me at TommyPQM on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, or you can find us at Roundtable Vids on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Roundtable and hit the bell to never miss a video. As always, that's about all I got left to say. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Tom, and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya!